everybody, it's Sam Mixed Up Craft. Thank you for watching my tutorial today. I'm going to be showing you how to make this pretty spectacular card. I love this. And it's, um, it's a pull-up card, but I'm going to add in concertina because I think that defines it a little bit more. So a pull-up concertina card. And it's I love it. I've really, really enjoyed making this. Um, this idea came from a lady called Leslie on one of the Facebook groups that I'm, I'm, I, I, you know, I'm joined. I'm joined. I'm a member of, I guess. Um, and she directed everybody to JK Arts on um, YouTube. So I had a look at theirs, and I just thought this is really, really, really cool. And it kind of bounces up and down as well. Um, so you can write your sentiment on the bottom. I still need to add my white piece there. I forgot to do that one, but um, yeah, I just think it's great. I've got an envelope here for it as well, so I'll talk through that in a minute, but let's get into it. So you are going to need, so I've done loads of it because you don't need to watch me sticking on a load of squares. So I've already done three of my concertina um, kind of uh, strips. So those ones can go there. So basically, you are going to need, I'll pull that off to one side for a moment. So you need four of these strips, which measure two by 12. And along the 12 inch side, you want to score at every two inches. So two inches, four inches, six inches, eight inches, and 10. And you want to do that on all of the four pieces, okay? So four of those. Then it comes down to all the kind of the little mats and layers on each of your strips. So here's one of them here. So you have six squares, but the bottom one you're not going to stick anything on. That one's going to actually be hidden. So it's only these five. So for the largest mat behind, you would need 20 of those and they measure one and three quarters of an inch squared. OK, so that's three. Then the layers on top you would need so you would need 16 if you're going to do a sentiment like I am if you're not and you just want them all the same then you'd need 20 of them again and those pieces measure up at um grab my ruler there these are one and a half inch squared okay so 16 or 20 of those depending on whether you want to put a sentiment in the middle of each one like I have right that's all of those gone through we will assemble that all in a moment then you are going to need, for your main base, it's a piece of six and a quarter inch squared. And then the mat to go on top of that is six by six. So if you're using six by six paper packs, then just tear out one of them, that's perfect, that's your base. Then for your strips that go across to kind of hold it all together, so this piece at the top here, this crisscross here, I've got these pieces now. I'm going a bit thicker this time, and these are seven eighths of an inch by three and a quarter. Two of those, and then if you want to finish it off again, this just kind of covers it a little bit at the top. You can see there, I've got the little discs. So I've got two of the large ones because there's one underneath, and then I've got the same with that one on top, and they are one and a half inch squared for the largest, and the smaller one is one. Okay, so that is everything there, and that's all of our scoring done. So get rid of all of this. So it is a very, very easy card. Yeah, it really does pack a punch. I think it's an awesome card, and I know what I'm going to be doing with this one. So you will have these four strips, if I just lay mine out there. Okay, so you can already see what you've got to do. It's, like I said, it's pretty self-explanatory. So first of all, with the bottom one, Okay, you want to fold that down, then up, down, up, and then down. Okay, so you will have that shape. You want to make sure both the ends are facing down. Okay, so it's a mat, yeah, you should have three mountain folds. Then lie it down, and just so you remember not to stick on the bottom one, I just tuck it under. So you should have one, two, three, four, and five. Then you want to mat all of your little one and a half by one and a half squares on top and then stick all these on top. Now I find it easier to decorate it all like this before we put it together because you can kind of see what you want to do and you can lean, you know, push down on your a harder surface to make that short to make sure things stick um, and so on and so forth. So I'm going to get those five stuck down quickly. Okay, so they are all stuck so that's what you should now have is four of these with four blank squares at the bottom of each one 
and then if you've got sentiments like I have, I've got them running through the middle. So now we need to assemble. So you've got your main mat, which is your six and a quarter, which is my dart piece. And then I've got my pattern piece here, which is six by six. This is the piece that we're gonna be sticking these to. And this is what I've done that's different to the other tutorials because they stick on top. But I love my pattern paper and I just like to be able to see all of that. So if you open up this, you can just see, you can see all of it. And it's actually that last one is underneath that pattern paper there and sandwiched between the pink. So flip it over. And what I've done is I've drawn across through the middle. So just mark it three inches on each side and just join that up to create a cross. This is just purely to help you line up these pieces here. Because what we're going to do is pop glue on the reverse side and then we're going to stick it on the back and you just want to use that pencil as a guide to make sure you get it halfway on each side so you know it's sat in the middle of this side and you need to do that on all four sides so I'll do this one first just to show you so I'm just gonna swatch some glue there and then oh gosh pop it on the side first until you're kind of happy use your wet glue because it is easier then to wiggle it about a little bit but I can see there and if it's a couple of millimeters either way it's not going to make too much of a difference but overall you do want it as centered as possible like so so when I flip it over now you get that nice and you, all you see is that lovely pattern paper so that's that one then you can just lie it down on my side like that then get the next one flip it over again put the glue on this side here and can go straight down if you want but it's probably best to hook it on the side slightly and it should just join up the center when it's in the middle it will meet with the very corner of the last one that you stuck down so again it's just a good way to, to just help you get it really centered and all nicely lined up so I'm just going to go and do the other two okay so that's all stuck on the reverse you can see now so if I flip it over carefully and then you should be able to fold each one over on the other side like so and you want them to all meet up like that so that was easy wasn't it so now you want to grab these two pieces here and you want to stick them over each other like this so I'm just going to put a little bit of glue in the middle and again, you can just kind of hold it in place, wiggle it around until you're happy. If you want to get a pencil out and measure it all, you can, but as long as you get a pretty spot on there, just let that dry a minute. Okay, so that's all done. Then I'd already stuck my circle on top. Now we're not going to stick any of this down yet, but if you hold the circle over so it's all nicely lined up, and then just with my hole punch, I'm going to punch through the centre of that circle. It just means you get a nice, kind of everything's even. And then I can just use that circle. You could do all four if you want, but sometimes it can get quite thick and hurt your hands. Now I can just put those two together. Pop that one. And then I've got that. So that's just all our circles sorted. Now, I'm going to grab this. And basically, you want to do two opposites first. And you just want to stick them so they're equal. So hang on a minute, because I need to lie it all down. So when it's flat, if you pop them under each one like so, you want it to, I don't know how to explain this. You can see what I'm doing. Basically, they're going to stick. You have about three quarters of an inch going under each one, like so. So you want that nice even cross in the middle. So what I would do is sit it in place like that and then with my pencil, I'm just gonna draw a pencil line on each of those where they are. And then if I bring that up, you can see now, that? there you go. Let me just draw those pencil marks a little bit more defined because you're not going to see these and I can easily rub them out. But basically, I'm just drawing the pencil mark up to the point where the card covers so I know where I can glue. Um, so let me just measure what this is. 
so half an inch yeah it's a little bit over a little yeah half an inch on each one so if you just draw a pencil mark they go at half an inch up on each one that's where you need to glue okay so now I can just pop a little bit of glue I'm just going to do two at a time otherwise you might get yourself into a bit of a mess so stick that one again make sure it's in the middle like so and then pull that one out a little bit there we go I can rub those pencils out in a moment so I'm not too worried and then pop some glue on that one and that one and again push those down and push them down as long as you've got something underneath each one and that uh, little cross is in the middle is nice and centered it will be fine so now bring that one up glue oh, it still needs to set a little bit okay so that's all now glued into place so now if I pop it on its side look at that it is just so cool really really cool so now oh, we need to stick <laughs> this on our base so it will go on nicely so you get a lovely frame and it just does kind of bring it all together so I am going to flip this one over and just pop my wet glue all on this okay so just put your hands inside there and you can just make sure that's all nicely stuck down and secure okay and then just bring that all in together like so here we go i love this these papers this is from the oh gosh which one's this one the first edition wonderlust i believe I'm sure it is pretty 100 percent. pretty 100 percent. i'm pretty sure okay so i've got some ribbon it's entirely up to you how long you want to do this but basically i'm going to do so i'm not tying a knot because i'm going to fasten it slightly differently let me just see how long this one was because i like i like what i've got on this one here so that's 10 so do 12 so that'll give you the little bit to so 14 let's just come down a bit there so okay so i've got my 12 inch ribbon fold it in half and then basically you want to thread it through underneath like so that's going to be hard for me to show you this but you want to split the ribbon apart to be honest you can do any way you want but i just quite liked the way that I'd done this before because it means I'm going to do it that way actually um, that you don't get any bulk you don't that knot just created more bulk so pop it in split it apart and basically so I've split my ribbon apart underneath there I know it's hard for you to see and probably this is going to be the most uh, fiddliest part of the whole card basically when you split it apart you don't want any of it overhanging so you can see it you want it all hidden because you're going to put glue all in here I find the hot glue works best and then you're going to stick that underneath and then thread that through the top again put some hot glue or wet glue would be fine there because it's just card on card but underneath is obviously the fabric and just sandwich it all together you just want to hide that ribbon and I just thought it looked much much neater and like I said you don't get any bulk and it lies completely flat so I'm just going to finish that off Okay, so that is the card finished. So you can see the ribbon there. It's all nicely concealed and none of it's showing or hanging out underneath. Um, yeah, there it is finished. Absolutely love it. So now we can do the envelope. So if you want to, if you know what you're doing, I guess you can make a box, but it does lie flat enough. If you're going to be putting more in it, maybe and putting photographs and stuff, then I would guess you would need to make a box. I chose not to because I'd use so much card and everything for that that I figured I'm just going to go for an envelope so you need a piece of nine and three quarters squared just double check that it was yep and you want to score at um let's just pop this one in it's at four and seven eighths of an inch so you want to punch and I can't find my little tool for this so I can't use that one that's way too big just do that one there um, and just score if you haven't got one of these um, I will share the um, tutorial where I show you how to use it so and then just line up those ones with your line and that last one like 
so. So I've got a piece there to decorate the top. Oh, just get rid of this. And then what you can do is just grab your envelope and your envelope, your card, and sit it on the square and you'll see it sits perfectly just gives you a little bit of a border so just go around burnish all of those score lines okay and then choose which one's going to be your top which i will have that one because it's not been cut into so these two are going to be folded in with that one going over to finish it all off so i'm just going to run do my tape on here that one and Take one off first and then you can stick the other one, the top of it onto that and then the last one like so. Just burnish all of those sides and then flip it over and then that's going to go there and I'll put a little white square on it nearer the time when I know who I'm going to give it to. And if I am going to post this then I would put it inside another bag anyway. So. There we go, just finishes that off. And then when you get it, I'm not gonna decorate this anymore. I mean, I put, you can see there and you're seeing all the pictures, I put butterflies on the top of that one. And I put these gorgeous little faceted like gemstones on the bottom there as well. So I'm gonna leave this kind of as is, I turn it over. I need to put some other card on that base, pop it in and you'll see there it does fit in nicely and then that can be sealed up. There's a little bit of bulk, but it does go flat and it all fits in that envelope. So yeah, I really, really love this. I just, I've enjoyed it so much. So take that one back out again, just so you can see them both. So there you have it, two very unusual pull up concertina cards. I guess that's what I'm gonna call them. Just trying to look for my other envelope. I think I've just dropped it somewhere. But anyway, there you go, I've rubbled on, it's done love them i think they're really really fun hope you've enjoyed them too give them a go remember to share them on my facebook page and um yeah until next time thumbs up if you enjoyed today and subscribe to my channel to see more thanks for watching bye